Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your March 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive right in now, Taurus. And this full moon is really, really cool because not only is it a super moon, which we've had a super moon, you know, last full moon, we will have two more super moons. So this is a highly intense time for everyone, but also the spring equinox is falling in there. It's on March 19th. There is, you know, Mercury is coming out of retrograde on, on the 9th of March. And this is just going to be a really great time. The full moon is in Virgo. I have everything all set up here for you guys. So I'm going to move to the side, the moonology card and the what is this the queen of the moon cards there we go they're all linked in the description box below so if any of these decks speak to you they will all be down there down there and let's see now with the tarot cards what they have to say and then we'll get into this moon so let's see here how will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? How will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, 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 show me clearly. Fantastic. All right, at the center of everything, we have the Queen of Swords. So that's an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. But your mind is also going to be key. You're crowned with the Temperance card, which is a Sagittarius energy, a time frame of November 22nd to December 21st. Then we have the Ten of Swords, okay? So the Ten of Swords is a completion of a cycle when it comes to doubts, when it comes to fears. This is the darkness before the dawn. Then we move to the Eight of Pentacles. This is really a time to get things done. Hard work, dedication, Ten of Wands, a repeat of the number 10 here, is very much a completion of a cycle. The Four of Cups, Divinity, Spirit, your angels, really handing you a gift. And you're at a crossroads with the Two of Swords. You're, you're going to see something start to open up that you hadn't expected. You have the Seven of Swords here moving forward. The Four of Pentacles, this is prosperous energy, but this is also having to deal with emotional vampires. Now, this could be from an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius, but this can also be people who made you doubt yourself, made you question the way that you want to move forward. And you're really, yeah, you're not taking this anymore because there's a radiance that is around you, Taurus, where you're like, you know what? I know who I am. I know what I want. And I am moving forward. And there's nothing and no one, quite frankly, who is going to stop you. And why is this? Because there is such power around you during this full moon. So we start here with the moonology and the queen of the moon cards where we have power being shown by this full moon. And the full moon in the moonology cards says surrender to the divine. So as you surrender to the divine, there's power here. And this is important because this is a time period that, you know, we have the awakening of the earth. If we are in the northern hemisphere, if we're in the southern hemisphere, we have the slumber of the earth coming, coming forward. And as we're moving into this, this time of change, this time of either incubation or this time of birth and and light, you're going to see here that you are really calling on your personal power and you are really seeing that by surrendering, surrendering to spirit's guidance, surrendering to divinity, surrendering to the power that you want, you're going to see that the full moon in Virgo, which is what this full moon is on the 9th of March, you are going to see that you are good enough. And I know that that sounds a little bit harsh. Like when I read it, I'm like, ooh, that's a little bit mean. Like you're good enough. Don't worry about it. It sounds rather dismissive. But thinking about it more and knowing the energy of Virgo, Virgo is one who is very discerning, very kind of like, okay, I like this. I don't like this. You know, they're, and they're not afraid to say it. It can be a little bit harsh at times, but there is this going, there is this energy around things about being detail oriented, about seeing the bigger picture of things, of fixing things, of moving forward. So with the full moon in Virgo, realizing that you're good enough is saying, you know what? I'm not going to spend my whole life comparing myself to everybody else. And I'm not going to try and live their truth. I am going to embrace mine. And as I do this, it doesn't mean that I have to have a red carpet life, you know, the 
the Hollywood movie star, everybody knows your name type of life. It is being happy. It is being successful. It is being pros prosperous within yourself. And it is obtaining happiness, which is astoundingly elusive. You know, people can have a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of sorrow. So here, there is this power of moving forward towards your prosperity, towards your bounty. And as you do this, do realize that during this time, the full moon is a super moon. And this says emotions run high. They most definitely do. Because what this moon is going to do is it's going to amplify emotions. It's going to amplify emotional relationships for good or for bad. And you're going to be seeing things differently. You're going to be looking at things more powerfully, more assertively. And as you do so, it's also going to amplify the Virgo energy of, you know, organization, of, you know, seeing the details of things. And you're going to find yourself attracting and being attracted to what you need to do in order to move forward. This is going to be a time where you're kind of solving puzzles, fixing problems, and you're not even going to be really aware that you're doing it because there's something here where you're just kind of like, you're going to have this moment, Taurus, where you're like, enough is enough. I'm done. This is overwhelming. This is too much. And I'm not doing this. And so you stop, you step back, and then you focus. And as you're focusing, as you're purging yourself of negativity, as you're seeing yourself rise, okay, like the sun rising, the darkness before the dawn, as you're embracing the dawn, you're going to attract to your heart, your soul, and yourself what it is that you desire. Now, this could be in a very small way, but it can also be in a very large way. And during this time, as you do so, this full moon is known as the worm moon. And this worm moon says here, faith. Have faith. And I love this picture with her pregnant belly and the earth and the moon shining upon her. And so here, as you are looking at what you desire, there is this power of creation around you. There is this power of prosperity. There is this power of determination. And so during this moon, you are going to find yourself pregnant with possibilities. It doesn't mean having a child. It means that there's this creativity, there's this passion, there's this power to you that you are really going to be embracing. And just as the worms, you know, bring nutrients to, to the soil, help make it rich and glorious for for the plants to grow, for the food to grow, for the animal, animals to feed off of, for us to feed off of, you are going to find that this is a time of great creativity, of great inspiration, because we're coming out of that Mercury retrograde where things tend to get a bit tangled, a bit muddled, okay? As we're entering into this Mercury direct time, all right, you're going to find that the lessons that you have learned have been invaluable. And you're going to see that there is this power, this presence, and this force to you that you are really embracing and really embodying towards your truth. And it's a richness of soil that, that you have now. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you know this, the, the power of this moon still lays true, but it's also the time of the, the worms, you know, it, it's not dying out, but going into hibernation and you know, a time where you kind of pull the blanket up and say, okay, I'm going to be in this rest. Because if you see her here, she does kind of also look like she has the blanket over her off the grass and around her. So it can be a very well be also in the Southern Hemisphere that you're going into a time of incubation because you are, you're entering into winter, which is a time of thoughts and ideas and, you know, really looking at what you desire and putting the pieces together. And this is going to be a time where you are having that creative energy within you and around you. And it really does move you forward. And it really does let you have faith within yourself to know that anything is possible. And yes, there are going to be some things where you're like, oh, well, Dane, that's not possible. I can't do that. Well, it's not absurdity. It is that you are going to see that doors start to open that were once closed, that you know, you're stepping into a power that you might have thought, okay, this is for somebody else, but never for me. Or maybe happiness happiness is for everybody else, but it's not for me. I always have to struggle. I always have to, you know, look at things differently. Or, yeah, no, it's going to be very much like that. And during this time, Taurus, this is a time of that beautiful earth energy that is so powerful for you. And it's a time of embracing your sensuality, of embracing your practicality, and really putting down your roots, seeing 
what is it that I love? What is it that I want? What is it that I desire as I move forward? Because as you enter into, when you enter into the new moon, which is going to be on the 24th of March, this is a time of beginnings. And this is a time where it says, it's where, where it says it's time to take action, where it is time with this new moon in Aries to take action. So there is this time from the 9th to the 24th where you're kind of figuring things out. You're looking at things more d deeply. You are, are seeing what you truly desire. You are also going to be looking at things and the Virgo energy is, is the helper energy, right? It is that caregiver, is that helper. And there is that beautiful sense of that to you and with you during this time. Right? But also know that there is going to be somebody who helps or who thinks they're helping. It can be this air sign energy right here. It doesn't have to be an air sign energy. It can be another earth sign energy that's going to think, okay, you have to do it this way, Taurus. And you're going to be like, no, I don't. I don't. I know this truth. I know this power. I know myself. And so there is going to be somebody who either you are kind of freeing yourself from their rigidity or you are going to see that, yes, they are well-meaning, but it really isn't going to be helpful towards you or for you. And with this new moon comes this sense of a new start is coming, new beginnings, new powers, new understandings, new road opening up that you hadn't expected, which leads you to the full moon in Libra, which will be on the 7th of April, this balance coming in. And it says a win-win outcome is forecast. You're going to see that during this time, during this full moon, which is also going to be a super moon, which is also going to be intense and amplified by emotions, you are going to see that you are a winner. And you're really going to understand that on a very personal, very deep level. And now during this time, what's so interesting is that the totem animals, the spirit animals for this time in March are the wolf spirit and the whale spirit. But the spirit animals for April are the wolf spirit and the hawk spirit. So with the wolf saying, turn knowledge into wisdom. You are going to see that everything that you have learned, especially from this Mercury retrograde, everything that you have learned has become part of your wisdom, part of your soul, part of yourself. And yes, it has made you fierce because we as human beings have this innate fascination and fear of wolves, right? We hunt them to extinction, extinction, extinction. No, I'm not saying that right, but you know what I'm saying. We, we hunt them. We save them. We have this sense of, of fear and also fascination. And so here, there is a sense of fear and fascination with an aspect of ourselves that brings forth wisdom, that brings forth clarity of mind and a desire of purpose. Also this ferocity of ourselves. So during this time, Taurus, yes, you are embracing your ferocity, but you might be a little bit scared of it. And with the whale spirit, it says, trust the great mysteries. Trust that you're not supposed to know everything and trust that everything isn't supposed to be clear. But what does become clear at this time is going to be astoundingly, pos uh, astoundingly powerful and open you up to endless possibilities. And it moves you towards the hawk spirit, which says, let spirit be your guide. And in April, Spirit is really going to be your guide. You're going to see that there's such higher power, such higher truth, and such greater possibilities around you than you have imagined before. This is also going to be a time with the Queen of Swords right here. Again, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, where you cut through doubts and fears. You know your mind. You know your soul. You know yourself. You are going to be astoundingly inquisitive, but also be very grounded within facts, but facts that are your truth. It doesn't have to be that you have to be like everybody else or, you know, this is the way everybody's doing it, so this is the way I have to do it. You might very well find this kind of rebel mentality to you, Taurus, that you're really embracing during this time. It's like, yes, this has to be done, but you have this creativity, yet you have this inspiration because you're freeing yourself from the Four of Pentacles. Now, the Four of Pentacles is having to hold on. Why? Because this is my emotional vampire card. These are the people who drain you. Even if they don't know that they're draining you, even if maybe they are the most well-meaning people, because some of them are, but they just have this negativity to them or this anger, this upset. And it is exhausting, especially if you are a very sensitive person. So here, there is this sense of purging away this negative energy by embracing your mind and really having your mind be in line with your heart. Now, why is that important? Because we like to think as human beings that we are these intellectual, powerful beings, right? But I would argue 
that yes, human beings are, are powerful beings. We are like the best hunters out there, right? But we are emotional beings. And if we ignore our hearts, if we ignore our emotional truth, and we start to make logic our only guide forward, you're going to find and you find that life does not have the same sparkle that it does when whimsy and beauty is allowed to come in. And as you are cutting through doubts and fears, yeah, yes, you speak your truth. Air sign energies, Gemini, Libras, Aquariuses, okay? I myself am an air sign energy, so I can speak about this with authority, but we can get sharp-tongued. If we do not watch our words, all right, we can be like kind of right to the point, cut like a knife. And so that was something that was very important for, for me to understand about myself. And this is going to be something that is going to be important to us to understand during this time that you can be very sharp-tongued, very kind of to the point, very direct, and not as mindful with your words as you may want to be. Because there's there are things during this time that are just going to be so clear that you're going to think, oh my gosh, well, you should just see this. And if you don't see this, it's just ridiculous. But know that other people during this time, as they come out of, and as they've come out of their Mercury retrograde, are also healing. And there's going to be this kind of, it's going to be really interesting because it's not you that's bringing it out, but there is something where there is a power of a job well done that is around you, Taurus, that is going to have people being a bit more authentic with themselves. And so they are also going to feel a bit more vulnerable because there's going to be this weight to the words that you say. So just be mindful of this during this time. And it can't be that you also feel like other people's words have, you know, this power to them that you're like, wow, where is this coming from? And it's because your mind and your heart are really coming into alignment with yourself and you're seeing what's important and also what really isn't and what you don't need within your life. And so as you cut through doubts and fears, as you embrace your power and yourself, you are going to find that you purge out the negativity and that can lead a bit of vulnerability, which you are going to see brings up challenges, but also with this Virgo energy, you're going to see that you are creating this really great routine for yourself or this really great kind of kind of plan. You know, it can be like this 21 day, you know, start a habit kind of thing. It takes 21 days to make something a habit. And this can be where you decide, you know what, I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to do this for 21 days so that it becomes a part of me during this time. And that's going to be something that really does release the negativity to move you forward in prosperity and in bounty because you're going to see that at times you're going to be looking at things for us and you're going to be focusing on the wrong things you're going to be like I don't know why this is so important to me I, it's not going to make sense but you're going to feel like you need to focus there and that's going to be this vampiric energy coming in where it's going to be like focus here because this is where you feel like you have the control but it's really over here where you're feeling a bit chaotic where you're feeling overwhelmed. And this is going to be when your heart and your mind come together, that you're going to be able to see this truth. And as you do so, you have the temperance card, which is strong Sagittarian energy. Again, this is a coming together of people. This is being able to unite people in a very beautiful way. This is balance coming in. This is understanding leading you forward. And this is a sense of harmony guiding you. And so here with the temperance card, you're in the water, but there's also the balance of the earth. So the practical and the emotional are coming together. And as you do so, the seven of swords, now the seven of swords can show sneakery, can show sneakery, sneakery, sneakiness. There we go. And it can also show a sense of gathering up your knowledge, gathering up your understanding and say, you know what? I'm leaving this behind because I don't want it. This isn't knowledge that is going to cut you. Okay. Because look how he's ha handling these swords. I mean, you know, they're all just in his arms. So if these swords were, were sharp, any way, shape, or form, he would have his arm cut off or, you know, at least be bleeding upon the, sto uh, upon the snow. So as you're having balance come in, you're starting to see things. And it can be you're seeing people's sneakiness. You can be that you're seeing, you know, truths that just you don't need, you don't want. It's like, this isn't my thing. I'm moving forward this way. It doesn't matter if people do not understand. And you are taking this knowledge that at this point is not a weapon, right? But you sharpen the swords and you have this wealth right here. And you're like, okay, this I get. Because remember, a sword, and even today, a well-made sword, 
costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hours to create. And so here, you have that wealth with you. And it just simply needs to be honed as you are embracing balance and truth and a heart's understanding. As you do so, you have gathered a lot. Now, I love that you have the repeat of the number 10. As I stated before, this is a time where you're starting to see, and you have a repeat of the number four, which is saying to take care of yourself, you know, take care of the house of your soul, you know, your body, know what you, what you desire, okay? Also, your home is going to be very important to you during this time, creating beauty around you. You might even find that like spring cleaning or clearing things out for the winter. These are going to be things that are really important to you or, you know, there can also be a, a shift. Spirit is showing a shift in things where things now have to be meaningful, you know, and you're not going to want to waste time on things that aren't meaningful to you, okay? Things that don't hold that true beauty, all right? And it can be with, it can be with things, but it, it's going to be a little bit deeper here. It's kind of like meaningful relationships, meaningful heart connections. These things are really going to be what powers you during this time. And with the Ten of Wands, you are gathering a lot, a lot of passion, a lot of curiosity, a lot of understanding, okay? This is your dynamic power. This is your intuition is really working for you during this time. And this is a sense of, of victory. It really is. It is a sense of victory leading you forward. But there are going to be times where you're taking on too much, especially if you try to take on other people's problems. Why? Because you have that Virgo moon coming and you are really going to be pulled also by, in April, by the the heart energy of the Libra moon, okay, the Libra full moon. So you're going to think, okay, the more I can take on, the more I can do, the better the scales will be for everybody else. And the more they'll be able to see their power, to see their worth, to see their abundance. And the fact of the matter is, that's not going to be the truth. The more you take on, the more, the, the more they'll let you. And then things will become overwhelming. And it will become just too much. And so here with the Ten of Wands, it's looking at your passion. It's looking at your prosperity. It's not taking on more and more, thinking that it will become better. It's looking at what you have and organizing it and defining it. And there is this radiance around you with the Nine of Cups that is a sense of beauty and prosperity and abundance and glory, and it shines brightly. And so here with the Nine of Cups, you may very well feel, not feel, you will see that people are drawn to you. During this time, people will be drawn to you. They will be sitting there and going, you know, what Taurus, I don't know why, but I felt like I had to share this with you. Or I don't know why, but standing by you just makes me feel better today. And you will find that they try to unburden on you. And it can be that they do unburden. You could be a very good listener, but don't internalize it because that's going to be too easy during this full moon for you to do. Sit there and say, I'm internalizing it. I'm, you know, going to make everything better. Or you might even do it subconsciously. Like I didn't realize that I was trying to make this better for you but I'm trying to take away your problems, your hardships, your pains, your disappointments, and that's making things too much for you yourself, Taurus. So just be mindful and also know that you're not really going to see this light of the Nine of Cups. You're going to sit there and be like, wow, I don't know what's going on here, but people are just going to be drawn to you and take it for what it is, you know, because there is this energy around you. And so when, when they are drawn to you, don't think, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're going to be best friends forever kind of thing. Sit there and think, okay, it is the power of the now and I will move forward in that power, but always keep yourself as your compass facing north, okay? That is going to be very, very important to you. Your groundedness, your roots, what you value, that is going to be exquisite to moving you forward. And this leads you with the Four of Cups where... You know, divinity is handing you a gift and it's crowning you, it's blessing you. You're not really going to see it, but it is going to be a part of you. It is pouring over you and giving you this light and this beauty that becomes a part of your movements, your soul, yourself, that little golden light behind you. You're going to be focusing here on these three cups and being like, okay, this is it. But no, there's such a sense of beauty, prosperity, and bounty that is coming that if you do not rest, if you don't step back, you'll never see it. You'll think, oh, this is, this is just 
more burdens, okay? And it's not going to be. It's actually going to be a really exquisite blessing that becomes a part of you. And it moves you towards the Eight of Pentacles. I mean, you're working really hard to embrace prosperity and success, to move forward towards what you desire, to look at things, and to have your hard work paying off. And during this time, because you're not going to see this light here, and people are going to be very drawn to you and also wanting more of you, okay, because of your energy, that you're going to sit there and think, maybe if I work harder, you know, I work longer, clear boundaries are going to be really important to you during this time. What you do, you will do with all your heart. And this is something just to be mindful of. You will do it with all your heart that you will start to become overwhelmed and people will take advantage. You'll be drained. So what you do, you do with all your heart and you do it exquisitely well, Taurus. But be mindful not to give all your energy away. And also be mindful to make sure that you're focusing this energy around yourself, but also around people that you love. It's kind of like putting on, if you're, if you're on a plane and the air mask comes, comes down, you have to put the air mask on yourself before you can put it on anybody else. And that's what you need to do during this time. It's kind of like taking care of you, taking in this energy of this full moon because you're at a crossroads. You really are. And you've only seen two ways to go about things. A third way is coming. And there's a sense of being blindfolded. There's a sense of a purity around you. There's a sense of a power becoming part of your truth. And as you're opening up to your heart, your mind and your heart coming together, your mind and your practicality, your, your roots coming together, you're going to see a third way starts to open up. Or you're going to see more than a third way opening up. Many avenues start to open up with things that you hadn't even realized. With, you know, success and power and beauty of truth that you may never even thought could be a part of your life, your story, your soul. And this really leads you to embracing the dawn after the, dark, the darkness. And this also lets you know here, it's kind of like when, when you're taking this wealth of the seven of swords with you, look at this. This person, okay, has 10 swords in them. That's overkill, absolutely. But also, if you think about it in a way of kind of like medieval times or, you know, why would this person be stabbed with seven swords and they just left there? Is this symbolic? You know, is there a reason for this to show the wealth that was spent on destroying something? Or is this a sense of look at each sword is a bit of knowledge? It's kind of like the Mercury retrograde. You don't like it. You don't like being stabbed with a sword, all right? But there is wisdom. There is power coming from it. And though you are going to feel tired and the four... The repeat of number four is showing, taking care of yourself, you know, embracing your power and your truth, but also being steady, being stable, kind of like the four legs of a chair, you know, being able to support yourself. And then here with the 10 of swords, you're really looking at that prosperity, that stability, and you're saying, look at the wisdom I have that others do not have. And you might say, okay, Dane, but I don't <laughs> like the idea that I was stabbed with 10 swords. You know, I don't like the idea of being this person laying prone on the ground and that's perfectly valid and perfectly true, but look at the wealth that you have accumulated. And this is the darkness again before the dawn. The dawn is coming. You rise and you rise stronger and wiser and better than before. And you embrace this wisdom and this knowledge, this completion of a cycle that moves you towards what you want and has you leaving behind what is no longer relevant. As you sit there and you say, you know, I can't be everything to everyone. And I also, I cannot, you know, hold on to the way things once were or the way things might have been or to an energy that I'm never going to please. And now it's time to move forward and let my radiance shine because you're not going to see it, Taurus, but it is most definitely a part of you. And then let's have, let's have Luna bring in some light here. So how will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. I'm just going to lay these out quietly.
How will Taurus be affected by the March 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. There you are. Oh, I love it. So at the heart of everything here is trust. Having trust and faith within yourself, within your power, within your understanding, within your emotional truth. As you claim your throne, as you know your mind, you are again going to be much more comfortable behind the scenes of things and you need to trust yourself as you are moving forward. Because what this leads to is this leads to the new moon in Aquarius, which brings love into the situation by trusting yourself, by focusing on what it is that you truly want from life. And by claiming your throne, you bring love into the situation and you cut through the nonsense, the doubts, the fears, the apprehension, and the negativity that was holding you back before. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, and that has been, and that has held you back in the past. This moves you to being protected. I love this imagery of this bird carrying the woman in the nest. And you're protected as you find balance, as you talk with others, as you embrace others' energy, others' understanding, as you have this Sagittarian energy around you. You may not see this protection until, you know, November 22nd to December 21st, but know that you are moving forward in this time, in this in this power, or you may find that something from, you know, yeah, from the past November 22nd to December 21st had you protected. And if things hadn't worked out a certain way, you know, during that time, you wouldn't be standing where you are right now. And this leads you to being able to move forward, but also the new moon eclipse energy coming through, which says expect powerful change because as you are moving forward in protection, Okay, as you are protected, powerful change is guiding you, leading you, and being a part of you. This leads you to a sense of peace. Okay? At your roots, there is a sense of peace as you take your passion, your creativity, what it is that you have gathered, and you start moving forward. But you also relinquish carrying everybody else's burdens and saying, okay, I'm doing my best, and I am you know, doing as much as I can but I cannot put somebody else's happiness on my shoulders. I cannot take away their life lessons and their emotional understanding. And this leads you to the full moon in Taurus, which says your dreams need a practical plan. All right, so this is sitting here and you have this beautiful energy of the Nine of Cups and you're gonna sit there and you're going to say to yourself, I have to harness this because even though you're not really going to see this Taurus and believe me, you're going to see a glimpse of it, but you're not going to see what everybody else sees. Okay. Which is exciting and beautiful, but it can also be a bit frustrating for you. But here, as you feel this energy, you feel this change, you feel this shift. You're going to be like, I need to make what has been a dream of mine into my reality. And it can be taking a small little step. It can be deciding to, you know, okay, I've always had this dream to learn how to play the guitar. Now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to play the guitar. You know, I'm going to take, even if it's 10 minutes, which I mean, is not a long time to practice, but even if it's 10 minutes, you know, and you start making that dream a reality. It's not saying that you have to go, you know, gung ho and just do it. It's saying carve time for it and make that your special time. And let it just be embraced by your heart, right? And even if it's just five minutes, that's going to be, that's going to be better than nothing. And that's going to be really good for you and your emotional brilliance during this time. It's going to make that light that is around you shine even brighter, Taurus. And this leads you in self-love. Self-love is so important. And it's going to be something where you're not really paying attention to it, but it starts to pour over you. That sense of seeing the beauty within yourself, of seeing your uniqueness, your power, your grace, your elegance and eloquence, which then leads you to the new moon in Sagittarius. I mean, you have the Sagittarius energy up here, which is protected. So you have strong Sagittarius presence. And this says, luck is on your side. Luck is on your side as 
you embrace your hard work, your dedication, your, you know, your power, your truth, and your gifts, which leads you to the masculine, which leads you to a sense of, okay, so I look at this kind of physiologically. Women can carry a boulder that is smaller for a greater distance. Men, physically, can carry a boulder that is bigger for a shorter distance. I don't know, boulder or rock, which one you want to use. I would say, okay, so it should be a rock. But here, there's something about something heavy that is coming that you are going to be able to carry for a short distance, okay? So there's a part of you that thinks, okay, I can do this longer. Don't try to do it longer, right? Especially when it comes to the roads that are opening up, the way that you're moving forward, what you're looking for, right? A short distance is going to show you a new road opening up or a new pathway coming or give you clarity to a question that you've had that you thought, oh, I can't solve this, right? Something is going to happen and it's going to come from heavy weight upon your shoulders, but carried for a shorter period of time, right? And you're going to think, okay, this is going to last for a really long time. It's not. Short period of time, but an intense period of time, which leads you to the void of course. Nothing will come of the situation. The Ten of Swords, the overkill, the feeling overwhelmed, you're going to think nothing will come of this. And Luna's saying, you're right, nothing will come of this all at once. It's going to be a sense of looking at it, of understanding it, and putting the pieces together. So what you think with the void of course, what you think will happen is not going to be what's happening. All right? It's like this little trickster that likes to come in during, you know, during the cycles of the moon. And we don't actually have any void of courses during the full moon, during the new moon, and during the, the next full moon in April. But of course, void of courses are, you know, in there and you can check them out. You can just put in void of course into the computer and see where they, when they come up. But it, this is going to be the trickster times where you think, oh, okay, things are going to work out this way or the conversation went this way and it really went another way. So the overkill here, you're going to think it went this way. You're going to think, you're actually going to think very negatively of it. It winds up being nothing comes of it. It's not the negativity that you thought it was going to be. There's going to be a positivity. There's going to be a brilliance. There's a power around you. And that is going to be something that brings you this wealth. It's an odd way of accumulating wealth, most definitely, to take the swords that you know you were, st you were stabbed with and see the wealth within them. But it is also through some of the greatest struggles, greatest di difficulties, that we find our paths. We find our beauty. We find our truth. We find our soul's power. And this leads you, again, to the new moon eclipse, where expect a powerful change. Expect a powerful change to move you forward as you bring love into the situation and you realize that the hardship you were expecting is, is not going to be what you get. But there is going to be a sense of a purge here, a sense of, of setting yourself free from this vampiric energy that, that can hold you back if you let it. It most definitely can. Your subconscious message for this whole entire time is the sun card. I love this. This is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. I mean, this is a sense of new dawns, new days, new power, really moving you forward, and a sense of beauty just being around you and being a part of your life. There is also going to be this wide-eyed innocence. It's, you know what it is? It's in Buddhism, they say, the beginner mind, right? It's embracing the beginner's mind of looking at things with new eyes, with childlike eyes, with childlike innocence, and embracing the new dawn and the new day that you want and you might have been doubting would come. And this is also knowing that as this light radiates from you, with the sun card, there's so many blessings that come. But sometimes it'll also feel like a double-edged sword because you'll have people trying to take you by eyes or you'll have people talking negatively about you and you'll be like, why? I'm just trying to live my best life. I'm just trying to embrace my truth and my power. And what happens is it brings out negativity. People go, wow, if you're having all of that beauty come to you, then there's going to be none for me. And that's not going to be where your mindset is, but just be mindful of not being pulled down that rabbit hole because that's a falsehood that it isn't to be part of your soul and yourself. Your subconscious message from the Queen of the Moon cards is change. This is going to be a time of great change. You're going to think it needs to be a battle. It doesn't. It's going to be a powerful change, a beautiful change that sets you free and moves you forward and leads you to the Moonology cards of the Waxing Moon, 
which says the energy is gaining momentum. The energy that is around you, the power, the purpose, the drive, the decisiveness, it's gaining energy, it's gaining momentum, and it is going to move you forward in a way that takes your breath away. All right, Taurus, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you, and I love you all. Bye.